Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, lecture 32 of Game Theory course, the second lecture of week 11. Uh, we uh, are talking about the principal agent problem, especially the moral hazard, where the workers or the agent, the part-time worker bill in our example, can work hard. In other words, increase his effort level, but because the principal, the uh, store owner Tom cannot really observe and verify the effort level of Bill, the agent. Therefore, using that, Bill may say, oh, I worked very hard, even though he didn't. Okay. This moral hazard problem is something very serious. If this can be solved economically, we can live in a much better economic condition. And anybody who can solve this can get a Nobel Prize in economics. I can guarantee that. And there are, you know, four possible ways to solve this problem. Number one was if the effort level was observable or verifiable by the principal, then the principal can uh, base uh, the wage, hinge the, hinge the uh, wage on the effort level uh, so that the uh, agent cannot but work very hard. Uh, before we go to the second uh, suggestion, second solution, uh, I want to talk about something, uh, the misunderstanding of economists. Uh, many people think economists are the consequentialist, which means uh, someone like uh, Sarah did something with a good intention, but the result was bad. But then usually the economists say, oh, Sarah did something wrong. Sarah insists that, yeah, the result was wrong, my intention was good, and economists wouldn't listen. I am the first person to admit that, you know, we don't really uh, uh, give any weight on, any uh, importance on Sarah's intention. But that is kind of misunderstanding if you say, the economists totally ignore the intention part. They only look at the result. For example, if Bill worked so hard last night for the convenience store, but still, if the profit is low, the economists would be upset and, you know, like uh, suggest Bill should get a low payment for that. But that does not mean we economists ignore the effort or our intentions. We actually do. We think the intention and effort are very important. And if possible, your wage should be depending on that. For example, uh, Professor Han is teaching a class, uh, working very hard, preparing class so hard. However, somehow the students does not take his course maybe 20 students take the course. On the other hand, like right now, uh, Prof. Han is not trying very hard, but like 350 students are taking his course, okay? Then, Prof. Han's salary, e economist, in an ideal world, should, depending on how hard he prepared the class, not how many students taking his class. Okay, if they are different. Okay, economic being think if Prof. Han prepare class better, then maybe more students will take his course. But we are the first one to admit that is not necessarily the case. So, why then uh, economists always suggest the president of Yonsei University, Prof. Han's salary should depend on how many classes he's taking, how many students are. Uh, in his class and etc etc the consequences not the intentions the reason is simple economists is first to admit the payment of professor han should better be depending on 
his intention and effort rather than the student number or consequences. Why? Because Han cannot control the student number. He can control how well he is prepared. Sarah cannot control the consequence because there is something like a lock, like the uh, fate lock or like God intervention factor in there. But the intention itself is 100% Sarah's own. The class preparation is 100% controlled by Professor Han, but then whether the student loves it or not, he does not have 100% control on it. Okay? However, why economists ignore the effort and intention? Because they are not observable. People are lying about that. We know that once we accept the intention part and effort part, which is not observable, which is not verifiable, people will lie. And that the damage would be enormous. So even though we want the ways to be a hinge on, based on the uh, function of the effort and intention because how can you make a function based on something you cannot measure, you cannot observe? That is why we may appear to be consequentialist who does not uh, give, a, give a, any meaning to the intention and effort, but you know, that's not because we have no uh, meaning on the intention, but because they are not observable. Okay, let's move on. Solution two. This problem is related to something kind of called uncertainty. I mentioned, if you remember, asymmetric information part, which is the effort is observable and controlled by the agent. However, it's not controlled, it's not observable to the uh, principle. Second thing, uncertainty is a little bit different. Uh, if there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the effort and profit, the problem would be solved. For example, your mom cannot see how many hours did you study for the exam last night, but then there is a one-to-one -one relationship. If you study one hour, your score is 10. Five hours, your score is 50. If you study nine hours, your score would be 90. If you study more than 10 hours, your score would be 100. If there is this like uh, no change like uh, relationship, your mom cannot see how many hours you studied last night. But if your score is 80 point, then your mom said, oh, you studied only eight hours? Why didn't you study two more hours and things like that? You cannot lie because there's a one-to-one -one relationship of that. So uh, even though someone cannot, the principal cannot observe and verify the effort level of the agent because the profit X is directly observable and verifiable where your score in the exam is directly observed and verifiable, the principal or your mom knows what was the effort level. So it's the same as this. Uh, if there is no uncertainty between your effort and profit, the asymmetric information problem is automatically solved. So the principal cannot see effort, but actually can get to know the effort through the X, the profit. So the agent cannot cheat on the principle. Okay. So, however, what is happening in this world? As I said, sometimes you try very hard, but your result is bad. Sometimes you don't try very hard, but surprisingly, you have a nice result. So, there is no one-to-one -one relationship between effort and profit. If we go back, I said there's a God intervention. The profit is not entirely decided by effort. Profit is a function, like 
probabilistic function of effort, which means higher effort, the probability to get a higher profit is bigger. But that does not guarantee that your profit may be low. Why? Other than the agent effort, what decides profit is God's trick. He is tricky and he disturbs the effort level. So the, some, something there is a lock factor in the profit. That's why. Okay? We call that uncertainty between the effort and profit. We are going to talk a little bit more about that later. This was a very important factor. Okay, so uh, there were two great ways solving the uh, asymmetric information, which means uh, make it possible for the principal to observe E or make it possible to for the principal to get to know E even though it's not observable through X, the result. But then this is not possible right now. My thinking is uh, maybe in the future, maybe in the future, some technology comes up and the, this machine measures the effort. So, I mean, even though somebody did very badly in the exam, I put the machine to the student and the machine said, oh, he knows a lot and he studied so hard and it was just a bad luck. He has the ability and have to level, but some bad luck because God, God's trick, his exam score is low, but you should give him a good grade because he uh, tried so hard. If that machine is invented, then the pro problem of principal agent problem, the uh, moral hazard problem would be immediately solved. So my guess is maybe in the future, who will get the Nobel Prize by solving the moral hazard problem. I think some engineer who invent uh, the machine which can measure the effort level. Most likely candidate. Anyway, solution three. What if the owner of the store, like Tom, give negative wage to the part-timer when the profit is low? We have a minimum wage. Uh, however, Let's say if Bill worked last night at the convenience store and usually the convenience store profit is $1,000 every night, but last night it was like $10,000 or something. How can it change from $1,000 to $10 reduced by 99%? But still, the principal Tom should pay bill the, neg the minimum wage. What if, what if the contract goes such that the user profit is 1,000, but somehow uh, the profit of one night is less than 200? Then actually, Tom is the owner is not going to pay bill, bill or bill's mom and dad should pay the owner Tom. So if that's negative wage, okay? I'm paying scholarship to my TA, but sometimes the TA has trouble with the students to complain a lot. Then I would say, instead of giving you the scholarship because the TA gave me such a headache this semester, the TA or TA's mom and dad should give me, the professor, a scholarship, something like that. Then, I'm pretty sure the agent would try more, okay? You know, or the, the professor, I, I'm the first one to admit that professors make a lot of uh, mistake and their effort to level sometimes is very low, okay? Uh, so I think even though from TA to me, I'm principal TA agent, from me and the president of Yonsei University, the president of Yonsei University principal, and he would never be happy with me because he always think, oh, Professor Han should, can try more. He can be a better teacher, but he never tries, something like that. And he make a mis my mistake in teaching, like uh, 
there's a typo in the PPT and he's grading something's wrong and always complain so many things, complain about his class and etc. etc. And what if the contract between me and Yonsei Universe says, uh, Professor Han, if you make three mistakes in PPT, three typos or more, or like uh, three uh, mistakes in grading the final exam or grading the assignment, uh, the present will kill you. Well, you know, uh, I can tell you, I will, I will uh, grade your final exam like five times before I give it to you. And I read the PPT like 100 times before put it in a, you know, YSEG or something. Uh, so uh, there would be much, much, much less mistake in the lecture by me. Or what if uh, imprisonment for the student who cheat in the exam? So what happened if you cheat in the exam? You got F. Okay, but then, okay, you got F and maybe uh, you suspended one year, but come back and things like that. Maybe because the punishment is weak, people sometimes cheat. So, like, uh, if you cheat once, you go to jail for 10 years. So, what about that? I mean, you know, you will be certain there will be much, much, much less cheating going on in the exam. Okay? Any objections on that? But the problem is, because of democracy, human right, or no slavery, we cannot do that. I mean, I cannot get a negative scholarship from my TA. The owner of 7-Eleven store cannot get a negative wage get the money back from the part-time worker, Alba, the president of Yonsei University cannot kill me. And we cannot put the student in prison 10 years when he cheated. Okay? It's all democracy, human right, and things like that. In a sense, I mean, the principal want the agent to do whatever the principal want him or her to do. When you want to make someone to do something, the uh, economic way is stick and carrot. Carrot and stick. If the someone, for example, my son study hard, I gave him a lot of delicious things and money and things like that. If he doesn't, I beat him up or I decrease the money for him and things like that. Not buying him clothes or like video games and things like that. So uh, when you are doing something good in principal mind, the principal gives something to the agent, something good. When the agent do something bad, the principal give the agent something worse. We, if you think about that, I mean, but this kind of minimum wage agent and the quit the job, free to quit the job, for example, what, what would be happening if I ask my TA, okay, I mean, if there's a too many student complaint, you, I'm not going to give you the scholarship. Instead, you should give me the scholarship. My TA will quit. That's why I cannot do that. Okay? And what I want to do, I want to make them a slave. And like, a, no, 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 you're a slave. You cannot quit. You stay here. And if you don't, uh, grade the student assignment correctly, I'll beat you up uh, until you do it correctly and things like that. That is slavery. Then they will try because they cannot leave. They would be beaten up if they make a mistake. If the president will said, if you make mistake in grading Professor Han, I'm going to kill you. What should I do? I quit Yonsei University. I go somewhere else, another university because why? I mean, you know, like, uh, I don't want to be killed. You know, I like Yonsei University, but like not as much as my life uh, itself. I don't want to die for Yonsei University, so I will quit. So this kind of freedom to uh, move your job, 
uh, prevent the stick. So the democracy human rights movement limits the stick. You know, it has many, many bad side effects, we understand. That's why stick can be used only in a limited range. range. That's what this human rights thing is about. The reservation wage is kind of minimum wage. So, you know, the pre professor, uh, the president of U.S. University may say, okay, okay, I'm not going to kill you, but if you were uh, st student to reaction, uh, feedback on your game theory course is bad, I'm going to reduce your salary 50%. So, uh, next year you might get 50% of what you are getting. What would I do? I said, hell no. You know, I can move to another university. That university would give me like 80% uh, of what I'm getting. But, you know, but they are going to give me for sure. So think about that. I can get 100 or 50 depending on student feedback, which I cannot really control because some year the students hate me with no reason. I'm doing the same thing. Some year they like me, but... No, I don't want to risk like 50% of my wage. That is less than what I can get in the another university where I can go and 80% of that. So uh, it's like 80% of what I'm getting is my reservation wage, which means if you don't give me that much, I'll quit the job kind of wage. Like, you know, you are, you are getting paid $100 every day uh, working at the 7-Eleven shop, but then uh, the owner said, okay, I reduce it to not from 100 to 70, but if your reservation weighs $80, you said, okay. I'm happy, I was happy working at the 7-Eleven, but next door, she will give me $80. So $70, that is below my reservation wage, because in my mind, I work at the 7-Eleven convenience store as long as it pays me $80 or more because at $80, I can quit and go to another convenience store, CU or GS, which is Korean convenience store, uh, very common. So I quit. So the reservation wage is the wage the principal should give the agent in order to hold him. If it's below reservation wage, they will quit. So that is the meaning of reservation wage. All this reservation wage means they can quit, and this there's a minimum, which means it's not slavery. We protect the human right thing. So now that we have to use carrot and stick in order to make the agent do the right thing. Do the right thing means what the principal want him want them to do, but because of reservation wage, no slavery, human right, stick cannot be used. So what can we do? The only thing is, oh, if you try hard, instead of if you don't try hard, I'm gonna cut your salary. The Yonsei University professor president cannot tell Professor Han if you. Don't teach very hard. I'll cut your salary. He cannot say that because I'm going to quit. Instead, of Professor Han, I'm going to give you 100. If you do badly in the class, still I have to give you 100 because of this human right minimum wage thing. The only thing I can do is if you teach better, if you teach well, try better, the student feedback is good, I'm going to raise your salary from 100 250 or 200. That is carrot. Uh, you, you beat up someone to do something, that is stick. You give them money or something to induce them to do what you want them to be, want them to do. What's the problem? The stick is costless. Actually, you can cut the price so stick may be profitable for you. So using stock stick is very tempting to the principal because you just need one stick, hit them all, and no cost on your side, and they will do whatever you want them to do. So stick is can be understand understood as the a low cost way of giving someone incentive. 
But because it's prohibited in this modern society, now you have to give them carrot. But then carrot is not free. You have to purchase a carrot. It's like money. So instead of a stick, now you should spend the money. The president of Yonsei University should spend the money on Professor Han, promising more money in order to make him teach better. Okay? So cost-wise, it's costly. So stick, the costless uh, way of give someone incentive is not possible. Carrot, the costly way is only the possible thing. Okay? So the thing is, uh, if someone is threatening me, if I don't teach very well, I'll kill you, then I'll try my best. But nobody can do that. Now you have to give me a lot of money. Then the thing is, the Yonsei University president think, oh, I give him a lot of money, 100% wage increase. Professor Han will try, but then Wow, that's a lot of money. Maybe that is not the worth for that. So kind of the uh, by getting rid of stick, the giving someone to do something, giving the making the agent to do something that the principal wants became very costly, and that's why uh, the solution is not possible. So. If we get rid of the uh, human right and go back to the employer can kill the employee if the employee does not work very hard, I guarantee you the employee, the agent would work much harder, even though I'm the first one to object to that kind of society. So anyway, the uh, moral hazard uh, is going to be going on. Okay. This is the end of lecture 32. Thank you.